guys, what's going on? It's Asher coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. How you doing? Uh, give me this. Give me this. Drop a comment and tell me who is your most used champion, legendary, most used legendary champion, and who is your least used legendary champion? Now, a few caveats here. Uh, least used, I'm talking about a legendary that you actually built. You know, you maxed out to level 60 and then you just don't use. On my list, I'm going to share my top 10 most used and my top 10 least used legendary champions. And when I say most, these, every single champion that I share with you, I use in at least three areas. At least three areas on my main teams in the game. Every single one of my 10 least used, I don't even use in Faction Wars. I don't use anywhere in the game ever. So with that said, let's jump into it here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time talking about each of these champions. Just gonna talk about like kind of where I use them and how I, you know, how much I like them. <laughs> and that's about it. Anyway. Guys, this is bullshit. Let's start with my most used champion inside Raid Shadow Legends altogether. I wish I could say it's my girl Syl, but it's actually not. You're dead to me. It's actually one of the only Legos that I have two built of, and if I can find him, it'd be great. It's actually Prince Kaimar. Uh, maybe not a surprise to some of you guys, maybe a surprise to some of you guys. I have two Kaimars built. One is uh, full masteried out, fully, uh, actually they're both full masteried out, but one I didn't even bother to actually even uh, in skill book up, because I don't need it, right? I'm only using him for Seal of Magic, and I'm only using it one time. I use Kaimar not only in the arena, on my main arena, team but I use him you know starting out with with removing all buffs and and uh and yeah CCing the enemy team as well uh but also in all my speed farming teams all my doom tower teams I use him against many different bosses I mean he this guy is just unbelievable because of the seal of magic so Kaimar is probably my most used champion overall inside the game he's the king of speed runs the king of arena for me at least all right next up is going to actually be kind of a newer champion it's Rio Bone Spear so Rio Bone Spear I mean she's amazing you can use her really everywhere and anywhere in this game one of the better champions in the game she has all of these debuffs on a single target i use her in clan boss i use her against several doom tower bosses she's just amazing i mean she, one of the best single target debuffers in the game and what people don't realize about rio bone spear is she puts out a lot of damage too right her a1 uh it hits incredibly hard and her a2 does as well so for a support champion pretty cool to see and then on perfect body this is just insane three turn cooldown with the cleanse, with the heal, with the block debuffs for two turns. Wow. Okay. Very, very insane ability. And then we're receiving, uh, when receiving any debuff, instantly transfer them from this champion to the attacker, dude. Real Bone Spear is the real deal. Next up is going to be Uros the Soul Cage. Yeah, that's right. The second Doom Tower secret room hard champion in the game. This guy is at first, I'm, I'm, I'll cop to it, guys. I thought he sucked. I'm like, really, man? He's got an AoE with, what, decreased speed, chance at a stun, and a strengthen, and an ally protect? That's all this guy's doing? But it's really all about this passive, man. He's one of the best champions in the game for Doom Tower bosses. I have him in regen and immortal. He's able to heal himself up and basically just solo or duo any, a lot of Doom Tower bosses. Not any. But I use him against Scarab King. I use him again in several areas, right? He's putting a bunch of poisons and then he's healing himself back up every time. I usually pair him and so the Drakes together and it's just, it's it's magic. It's, it's really fun to watch. Incredible champion, Earl's of Soul Cage. Next up is going to be Captain Obvious Siffy. Siffy is, you know, not just Bommel, not just Arena, but so many different areas in the game. I mean, still having block debuffs for two turns, increased defense, increased speed, and an incredible revival on her kit as well is, uh, and what, second fastest champion in the, in the game or around there at 114 speed. She's amazing. I love Siffy. I build my Siffy with very high resist. You can tell by the, uh, the overall champion power. Uh, big, big fan. And I actually was so lucky so I was lucky to pull two Siffies. I just haven't built the second one just yet. Next is going to be Lydia. So I think this concludes. No, there's one more Void. So six of my ten most used champions, go figure, are Void champions. Lydia the Death Siren still, uh, I think I ranked her... Did I rank her the second most, this, when I ranked the top 10 champions overall inside the game, I put Lydia as number two, and a lot of people in the comments were like, you know what, at first I was gonna argue with you and say, yeah, maybe top 10, but not number two, and then I thought about it, 
these are like a lot of comments said this and uh you're absolutely right she's insane because i mean we think about her with a block revival on her her passive uh which is so cool reviving your own team i use her in ice golem i use her in the arena i use her all on every doom tower wave as kind of a buffer and debuffer right she has increased speed and strengthen on a three turn cooldown with decreased defense and weaken this ability siren's whale is really one of the best abilities inside the entire game it's really right up there with you know battle kazara's malice and and uh, I don't know, Valkyrie's counterattack and shield, you know? Uh, anyway, she can totally just block out somebody with the A3, poison sensitivity. I use her in clan boss as well. I just think that Lydia is is unbelievable. I, granted, very not very accessible because you have to beat every faction crypt to get her, but still, she's amazing. Krisk, of course I use Krisk. I mean, you know, anytime I'm in trouble, right? Anytime I can't beat something and I'm lazy, I'm feeling a little lazy. Like I can't find the perfect champion to build to put in that area, that spot on the team. And I just want to win. I just put Chris on the team. Not just that though. He's, you know, important part of my tag team arena teams, my arena teams uh, with the passive shields. He is a huge part of my clan boss team. I have him built for clan boss right here. You can see he's in a stalwart in a speed set, uh, just really insane on the stats as well because he is my main clan boss carry uh very fast with a lot of defense and stalwart gear uh chris is just the best he was my number one this big spoiler to that video by the way i'll link that video for you guys the top 10 power index champions in the game but yeah chris was my number one most powerful champion in raid shadow legends let's keep it moving here uh finally covering four champions who are not uh void affinity and that is going to be starting with bek where are you bad el kazar now, for a long time, I want to say before Doom Tower especially, I didn't use much of Bad Alcazar. Maybe only Dragon. That was it. But now with Doom Tower, you need cleansers, right? He can remove all debuffs. Actually run him now with level 25 dungeons. He's the proper affinity. I run him on my main Dragon and my main Ice Golem team as well. Obviously, in Faction Wars on all these champions I run. Uh, but really, like I said, Malice is an incredible ability. A full cleanse with continuous heal with two poisons on all enemies, man. It doesn't get better than that. And I run my Bad Kazar in a reflex set. I'll link that video on this build. I'm just such a huge fan of Battle Kazar and reflex. I almost think it's I don't want to say mandatory, but I, I, I'm a big believer. The more I've run him in Reflex, it's the best set for Battle Kazar if you can get your hands on some good Reflex gear. Uh, next up is an obvious one, Ninja. Dude, Ninja's like the best damage dealer in the game against bosses, against bosses, right? He has this Escalation ability, which ups his damage quite a bit in his crit damage, his attack and crit damage, excuse me, against bosses or against anybody. He has an AoE freeze, good for crowd control, and Hail Burn is just an insane ability, man. Just deals... Just sick, disgusting amounts of damage. Here's my girl, Sillage Riggs. I wish I could say it's my girl, Sill, but it's actually not. I don't know how to start. I already talked about how I pair her with Uros, but I really pair her with a lot of different champions. Drekstar, Blood Twin, a lot to so or to duo, a lot of Doom Tower bosses. She's just incredible with the heal, the increased speed, the revival, the stun. The decreased speed, she's doing so much and she's defense based. You guys know how much I love Syl. I'm not going to belabor the point, but she's amazing. The best thing that Plarium has ever done in this game is really the last two champions that we talked about, in my opinion. Syl the Drakes and Ninja. They're incredible. My last most used legendary is, believe it or not, champions like Draco, like... He used to be my most used legendary, and now I only use him in like maybe one or two areas of the game just because they've added so many amazing uh, epic debuffers to the game. And Lydia, of course, right? So anyway, it's actually Kreela Witch Arm. Kreela is my go-to ally attack, primarily because her ally attack, which is the Binding Glow ability, is on a three-turn cooldown, right? So better than Lanicus, better than, in terms of just the, the duration, Necret the Great, Lanicus. Uh, I use Necret quite a bit as well, but I, I Kreela a little bit more. Uh, and she has an increased attack and the increased crit rate as well for three turns and an AoE attack on a four-turn cooldown. She also has a cool shield that comes in handy on her A1 with the ally with the lowest HP for two turns. Uh, so Kreela actually Actually, I run a lot of ally attack teams on Doom Tower bosses. So not just Orc Faction Wars, but against several bosses. If I need an ally attacker and I don't need to, I'm not struggling to keep my team alive. If I'm struggling to keep my team alive, I'll go with Necret the Great. If I need an ally attacker just for damage, but I already have a good support team, uh, I'll run Kreela Witch Arm. So mostly it's Kreela for me. All right, my 10 least used legendaries. Start at the top again here, guys. There's only three voids on my least used. Three 
Void Champions that I don't use anywhere, and it's actually a Nithui Blood Twin. Now, Nithui Blood Twin, I feel like I'm really critical of this dude all the time here on the channel. He's not a trash champion. He's really not, right? He hits hard. Not as hard as you would expect with, you know, what, 1729 base attack? Multipliers aren't that good, but still, the Snow Mercy ability is pretty good. He has an AoE leech as well. Not very hard hitting, though, and then anybody he kills cannot be revived. However, with all that said, I just have Demon Spawn is one of my best factions in terms of having OP champions everywhere, so I don't even use them in faction wars. And if I'm looking for a block revival champion for Arena, which is where most people would probably use a Nithui, I'm just running Foley instead. I think he's better, deals more damage. And uh, last but not least, a lot of people say that Nithui is pretty good for Ice Golem. I don't know. For me, it's like so RNG. Are you going to kill? Is he going to be the one to kill both of the uh, the minions so they don't get revived? For me, there's better options out there, and I, I just don't run in Itwi anywhere. Uh, okay, Agnar is the next one, not Solus. Dude, I have. Uh, I have Warchief, so if I needed a reliable Provoker, I might run Agnar, but right now I don't run Agnar anywhere. He's not an awful champion, he's probably a C plus or a B uh, minus champion overall. Maybe even a little bit higher depending on who you have and who you need, right? Everything is subjective in this game. But for me, he's just, you know, Warchief is a better Provoker and I already have a good Provoker in Warchief. Other than that, he's not dealing an insane amount of damage. Good damage, but not insane to, just, to justify me actually using him anywhere. The next one's actually going to be a really good champion, the fastest champion in the game in Blind Seer at 115 speed. Uh, very good. However, I just don't use her. Uh, she has a block debuff in a in kind of a, a decent shield on the A2. So it looks great, right? I mean, why not? But then she has a self-sacrifice. Self Revives all dead allies with 35% HP and block damage on all allies except this champion for one turn. Now, this is not an awful revival, but it's not that great either, right? I mean, every ally with 35% HP and that block damage, I mean, think about it. If you're reviving them, turn meter fills, and then they're left super vulnerable with 35% HP. I'd much rather see like a 75% HP and no block damage or an increased defense or a strengthen. It's just that that revival seems good, but it's just not that great when you have access like me, when you're a dirty pay to win uh, player like me and you have access to so many better revivers. So Blind Seer is an incredible champion, 34% you know, defense, but even on Dark Elves Faction Wars, I don't need her. I, I don't need a lot of support. Um, Dark Elves are so loaded, so stacked that I just DPS them down. I don't need a reviver. So Blind Seer, I want to be very clear here, a very, very, very good champion. However, I don't use her, right? Just gotta be real. So, next up is going to be Thea the Tomb Angel. Now, she is not a very, very, very good champion. She's a trash champion, in my opinion, only because people who are already unlocking Thea the Tomb Angel from secret rooms on Doom Tower Hard have so many better options than Thea the freaking Tomb Angel for a DPS or for a champion. Even with Rule the Hunt Master and other Hex champions being added to the game, it's still not enough here, man. She needs to just uh, apply her Hex to everybody on an ability. Uh, this Hex Reaper attacks all enemies, damage increased by 50% for each Hex debuff on an enemy team. It's not, even with the Hex up, it, it deals a lot of damage, but even, like, what are we trying to do with Thea the Tomb Angel, right? Seer, the Void Epic Champion, is so much better. She'll deal, you know, 10 times, not 10, uh, 2 or 3 times as much damage, even if all the Hexes are applied. So why am I using Thea the Tomb Angel? I don't. All right, next up is going to be the recently buffed but still lackluster Pixneal. Pixneal is not an awful champion. And I'm going to take crap for saying that, but she's not an awful champion for progression. But I'm not in progression. I'm not about progression. So I have increased defense, continuous heal, uh, even increased defense and continuous heal on all allies for two turns with an attack. Enemies under freeze, but we have weaken as well, but they have to be under freeze. I hate the conditional freeze, but even the increased defense and the continuous heal is not that bad. We also have the icicle barrage. I still don't like it. It's five times at random instead of four now. I wish it was an AoE instead. Uh, she received a decent buff. A, a higher percentages here on the passive two, but still not worth really building, in my opinion, unless you're really struggling for increased defense on a three-turn cooldown. Uh, Narma the Return. Some of you guys in the comments swear by Narma. You're saying that I'm sleeping on her. I should try her out. I tried her out. I don't know, man. 
For me, Clan Boss is all about unkillable teams. It's all about, and, and she's not trash on an unkillable team, but I feel like there's so many better options for uh, than her out there right now. She has increased the duration of three random debuffs, not bad. And then she has poison and poison sensitivity on a four turn cooldown. I mean, a great poison damage dealer. I just have better options, uh, and I'm not all about the poisons right now on my Clan Boss team. I'm running like a Crisp, Valkyrie, Iron Brago team with Lydia and Rio Bone Spear that Deadwood Jedi came on the channel and help me make i'll try to link that video if i can think of it uh but narma just doesn't fit into that equation so i don't use her anywhere uh, other than that even knight's revenant faction war is just not not my jam don't need her there all right next up is going to be elegaeus i think this champion's pretty trashy i had i don't know i was i had an open mind about this dude but now that i've tried him out man i don't know attacks one enemy put their target skills on cooldowns oh if there's duplicates it'll put all their skills on cooldowns okay and then on the a3 an aoe attack with removing two random buffs and then decreasing turn meter by 20 percent increases a little bit uh a little bit more depending on the hp of this champion uh i don't know i don't know guys what do you think about elegas i just like his kit when you read it he doesn't seem that bad, but boy, when I play him, I'm like, yeah, he's got to go. He's got to go. There's no obvious fit where if you use Elegas, let me know where you're using him, right? I'm, I'm really genuinely curious about that. The next one is going to be my least favorite fragment summon of the year here. I don't use him anywhere. I can't really justify it. He's not a great champion unless you're just struggling for progression in this Rorik Wormbane. What do people think about this? People seem to like him, I guess. Uh, you got a stun on the A1. He has a one enemy with uh, decreasing the target's turn meter by 75% on the A2. Not bad. Uh, and then we have an attack one enemy with ignoring defense on the A3. I don't know, guys. I mean, does this justify building this champion? He's immune to stun on his passive too. I don't use him even in Barbarian uh, Faction Wars. Like a champion like Armina, an epic magic affinity champion, is putting out way more damage than he is, has better control even with the turn meter depletion on the Dragon Rage. I think he's my least favorite fusion or fragment summon this year, uh, but I might be forgetting somebody. So yeah. Uh, moving on with the spirits, we have two more champions on my least used guys. Number one's going to be one that I'm sure a lot of you guys love, but again, you know, no, no, no shots, no shots uh, intended here. No insult, no offense. I use him so infrequently, I can't even find him. It's it's Genzin. So Genzin, I think I'll use him uh, on Faction Wars and Shadow Can. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but overall, I was expecting a lot more damage, a lot more from this champion. He has turn meter fill all over the place, which is cool. Uh, decreased defense on a three-turn cooldown, and then will ignore unkillable and shields on a single target on an A3 with more turn meter fill. All of that is really cool, but again, for me, the damage just isn't there. And I have also... I don't want to say better debuffers, but I have, you know, a lot more debuffers that I would rather have on my squads who are bringing more to the table, right? Even an Ugo who has like block buffs, granted magic affinity, even a Stagnite who has decreased attack and decreased defense with the decreased speed on the A1. At least there's a lot of use cases for a champion like that. For Genzin, it's all about, okay, some damage and deplete turn or uh, decreased defense. And I just have better options, I feel like. But again, let me know if you disagree with me there. Last but not least is going to be a champion who, well, I don't even know why I built her, honestly. It's Astrolith. So, you know, you can do some pretty fun things. It's a bomb that cannot be resisted. That's pretty cool. And Judgment has an a HP exchange as well. Uh, but that's about it. <laughs> well, I like to dance. I still think the Astral, she has a good aura, speed and arena battles by 28%. She got that going for her, but you know, we already have Arbiter who's better than that anyway, or a lot of, 45% of you guys have Arbiter based on my community tab poll. Guys, that's all I have for you. What, what else do I have to say about Astralith? Where am I using her? You know, maybe against Bommel now that bombs do more damage. We'll see. But even that, it's a stretch in my opinion. I think there's better bomb layers in the game. Even if bombs become meta, I still think they need to go ahead and buff Astralith maybe just a little bit more. She doesn't feel like a legendary. She feels to me like an epic champion. So guys, let me know again in the comments. Another reminder, who is your most and least used legendary? Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care, guys.